Hi there, in this video I'm going to be assembling this, which in theory is a kitchen cabinet, but I'm going to use it in the bedroom. So that's going to be interesting, with a little bit of help from my daughters. They are on the package. So this package is quite sturdy, I can tell you that from the start. So let's open it up and start the assembly process. Okay, it's opened up. Those are the sides. This is the 75 centimeters tall variant. So it's 60 by 75. In theory, uh, top and bottom and the middle shelf because it only has one shelf as far as I'm aware, this uh, particular model that I got. And that is everything that we need to put it together. Instructions, flathead, phillips, crayon, hammer and the level and they say that you need two persons, uh, yeah, you should uh, install it, uh, assemble it on a, or a carpet or a rug, I will install it onto the packaging, this is all that you get and this is how they show you to lay it out and I will do exactly as they show us because it's always easier to do that and I will install uh, the eight connecting standoffs which are these things right here the ones with a bit of plastic on them and we will be installing them exactly in the holes that they show us here, here, there and there and the same in a mirror on the other uh, side already installed the four uh, connecting elements on both of these sides now I'm installing this which is basically this step right here step number three uh, we have everything exactly in the position that the manual shows them uh, initially I didn't have them in the proper position these are the type of screws that is the type of screws <laughs> that uh, is used here camera focus so I just need one more in here and I'm done and I noticed something for these plates this is the part that you will see because we have these holes right here so this is the visible on the underside or actually this is the top part and there is the underside of the cabinet but on both of them this is the visible part the one with these big uh, gaping holes in it at the moment in which this will uh, go a bit later this thing is i will show you but look here so this particular manufacturer from poland uh, that's building stuff for ikea did a boo-boo and basically they put these things upside down in the machine so the marking that should be in the inside of the cabinet where you don't see it and don't care that it exists is on the outside where you see it you, you know what I'm saying, you, you yeah? IKEA, uh, please get in contact with them and tell them to flip these things when they drill them. It's, yeah, it's going to be nicer for people not to see this whole thing for no particular reason under the cabinet. Just saying. Anyway, I'm going to try and use something to get it. In theory, it's, it's just paint. The, it's dot matrix uh, printer uh, and it's just paint I'm going to try and use some alcohol and then some paint thinner and what not to maybe remove it because I don't want to see it in there and I if I cover it with white paint I will have white paint of a different shade in here so that sucks anyway never mind it is what it is and also I hate that IKEA leaves this uh, big uh, holes yes they will not be exactly like that they will be covered with this uh, in the end but still not pleasant to look at ikea leaves in them on the outside of furniture not inside which kind of sucks in my kitchen i will link uh, the video in the description in my kitchen i found from other furniture some uh, uh, plastic thingies that you can glue on top and cover them IKEA doesn't sell something like that, so I've got no clue why, but they don't sell them anyway. But they do sell some plastic uh, covers for these holes, 
because if this remain you you see that this is a universal thing that you put together in theory yes it's nice it's uh, you feel good about yourself that you are building something but it, it, why should i see all those holes which are other options of assembling stuff together when ikea could give me directly the small plastic covers but yeah i bought them two packs of 100 of them for the kitchen and for sure i will be left uh, with enough to plug these holes also that remain open but yeah a bit of rant about these two types of holes that remain in ikea furniture most of them on the outside sadly anyway so let's tighten that and then put some wooden dowels into these holes right there you can see that two holes are on that side and two holes here so you put wooden dowels onto the ones that are next to this because this latches onto this so this hole will be the place through which this thingy will go in here to latch i will show that in a while okay this is one side and this is the top as you can see these things are going in and they will be seen soon right here you can see them now and the wooden dowels go into the holes and everything will latch together you simply smack this while holding on to this and uh, they come up, come together let me try maybe even without smacking just holding my leg uh, it needs smacking from the other side anyway be back in a second and now we latch them in place with this, put it in with the arrow pointing in the outside direction and then use a flathead screwdriver to rotate it until the arrow is pointing in the opposite direction. Yes, ideal is to hold, uh, hold everything in place so it doesn't move. I cannot really do that with one hand, but it's latched. Yes, it is a sort of plastic, so some marks will appear on it. Maybe if you have an even wider screwdriver, they will not appear. But this is why I don't like that they are not covered with uh, with something that glues on top. I will find something myself to, to glue on top of them anyway. Another one here, then on other sides. Bottom identical with this side and we should have the whole frame at uh, the end. The frame is finished and now we put this with the white part on the inside or if you want to see this you can put that on the inside nobody is stopping you in here and make sure you measure diagonally and both measurements should be identical for this to be square and you can hear my daughter not very happy in there and when they are square you start hammering in these things because if it's square when you are hammering in, in these things it remains in that shape if it's crooked and you do this it remains crooked nothing that you can do so this provides stability and backing at the same time and make sure you have the holes where they need to be and also it was not in place all of these edges because all of these have raised edges need to be on the outside so make sure you have assembled everything properly and they are in the proper position so for me measuring and hammer time and it's done now i can lift this uh, on its bottom oh forgot to try and wipe this i'll try and wipe this first uh, and then start installing the part of the hinges that install onto the cabinet which is this part right here and I'm going to have the door open from the left and remain on the right side. So I'm going from this page downwards. If you want the door in reverse, you go to page 21. But for me, it's not uh, reverse, it's this. Ta-da! I was able to fully, remo fully remove it with a nail polish remover. So I undid the IKEA booboo. -boo. Now let's put this on its feet and install those things. Hinges are in and you might be thinking <clears throat> why are you installing a kitchen cabinet uh, in the bathroom? Well, because I couldn't find the bathroom one of the proper size 
Yes, this might not be as resistant as a dedicated bathroom one to humidity, but then again, I assembled some bathroom ones and at least the frame itself is no different. The door, yes, it's, it's, it's better resistant to humidity, but this is an area where water should not get onto it. And if it gets, then there's a bigger problem somewhere. Anyway, so there's that. But if you think about it, even kitchen uh, cabinets, even in the kitchen you have uh, vapors when you're cooking. So they still need to be a bit uh, resistant to humidity. So yeah, there's that. Now, next step, let's get to uh, installing this thing onto the wall and drill some holes and whatnot. Align this thing onto the wall with two Pampers boxes. Double checking with this repair level. And it seems to be perfect. So this is the height at which I will drill the two holes and attach it directly to the wall permanently. Holes drills. This thing is attached to the wall permanently. Put one of the covers on. Putting the second cover on. If I could actually do it with one hand. And I... Yeah, I can do it with one hand. And uh, at this point, next, these are already on. Uh, I have these things that I need to mount to the door, but I'm going to attempt to see if they look exactly like some that I have with soft clothes. And I will put one of these instead of a soft clothes, and I will take one soft clothes from that particular uh, bathroom furniture and put it uh, in here. So this will also hopefully have soft clothes. This is the non-soft close and this is a soft close with that plastic right there. And this cabinet has not one uh, soft close at the top, one non, and one soft close at the bottom. So I will only leave this as soft close and then this is identical to what we have here. This will not be soft close anymore. Probably it will close a bit faster, but who cares? I will replace it with this and then ours will be soft close. Awesome. Install the hinges with the same type of screws like that. Well, actually, no, my bad, these are thicker. No, uh, another type of screws, the, the thicker ones. Top one, the standard one, bottom one, the soft close that I stole from the other cabinet. Hopefully it's going to be enough to soft close this. If not, whatever, I at least tried. So, let's uh, slide this hole onto that screw and uh, Tighten it and hope for the best and then we will try to align it a little bit. Next step, installing the pins. I'm not going to cut this out. You simply put them in the holes. I am doing something which might make sense in a moment. Again, I remembered that I paid for the... I paid, that I bought the variant with uh, one shelf here and one shelf here. It seems I didn't, so I must have done something wrong. So this installed, now we come with the shelf itself in the middle, something like this at an angle and slowly slide it down. And now it's staying on top of uh, these things all around and I can put whatever I want on it. But the space is not that great. Maybe I can put it in the middle somewhere, but again, it's not that great. Uh, what I've done, I think I showed you this big plate from another cabinet, a shoe cabinet. I will link it in the description. I remained with two of these plates. One, I cut it to size to use it in this and one will be used in another place. Uh, and I also got some of these spares from that cabinet being uh, similar furniture <clears throat> again <laughs> they do fit perfectly so we are putting them in here if we can actually do it and now hopefully if all is well let's go with this plate right through here and drop it down and 
Ta-da! We have two of them. And now E4 is well. Ha! And we have much better organized interior space. And now let me install this, which is kind of similar to these ones. I couldn't find this exact model from uh, this particular furniture being sold separately. So I bought again from IKEA one that seemed similar enough to me to make it work with this thing to integrate it uh, with the rest of the bedroom. So let me install this. This is the model number if you need it and open it up. And of course, uh, first I will glue these things so I don't forget one here and one on the top corner. In theory, this thing only uh, is forced in place in here and they didn't provide any tiny screws for these two holes. So I basically found my own. They are tiny as you can see. So I'm just going to get them in there, but I needed to glue these things right here because otherwise the screw would hit. At this point I'm aligning the hinges. I need to undo this one. So this slides like that. Then I need to check on the height with this and this obviously for both hinges and the depth with this. Uh, you want to do it and then this will move about, about like that. But the depth I think is good. Only the height and the uh, uh, movement on this direction I need to adjust. Ah, and yes, with only one of these you basically almost don't have a soft close feature. Let me show you. It just closes. Maybe it helps, maybe not, but I don't think it helps that much anyway. But it's there and I'm not moving it back to where it was before. And it's finally done. Not the highest of quality. Uh, hopefully it will survive in the bathroom. But anyway, needed to be done and it was uh, good alternative in terms of size because again I couldn't really find anything that would uh, match this area that was bathroom intended directly from IKEA. So that's about it. Hope this video helps you. In which case please give it a like, check out my other IKEA related videos and as always see you in the next one. Bye! Also remembered to add one of these nipples from this set that I bought from Lidl. It's basically rubber silicone with double adhesive tape. So when I open this thing up, we don't damage it or the wall itself. And yes, wife made sure it's always full.